All right, welcome to another tutorial in Maya. Today, what we're going to look at is the directional light. And a directional light basically is like the sun. It casts a nice even shadow. Um, you can use it uh, a number of different ways. For right now, what we're seeing is just sort of a, a, an animation of, you know, a scene with a, a directional light in it. And as you'll notice, the shadows really kind of stay in the same place. Um, the directional light, even though it looks like the shadows are changing direction, they basically aren't. They're just being, you know, they're, they're one shadow cast by a, a light. So that makes a difference if you're going to be doing work with depth map shadows and um, sort of saving them to disk. But that's a whole nother tutorial for another time. So let's get started and take a look at just the beginning aspects of the directional light. I'm going to come into my scene here and, and let's take a look at what I have going on. Um, basically, I just have some text. Um, here's the shadow that's being thrown by the light. This is an ambient light right here. Uh, there we go. That's our ambient light. And this is just sort of giving the, the scene an overall starting lighting point so that I can kind of get some definition on the, the top side of this. Um, and that's about it. And then we have the, uh, the directional light. So as you'll notice, um, the directional light um, is basically just casting light from this side directly across like that. And um, if you uh, were to say move this light, it can be even over here and it's still going to cast the same light. Let's do a quick render um, and check out what this looks like. You can see where I have my plane and then here's the shadow. And as I move that light in backward or forward, it really isn't changing the direction or anything that's going on with those shadows. So that's something to be aware of with a directional light. Now, watch what happens when I bring this directional light, like say up here. I'm going to minimize my render view for a second and let's take a look at, take a look at this. Um, the light, if you have a high quality rendering on and you have your lights turned on and your shadows and all that, we can take a look and see kind of interactively what this uh, directional light is doing. I'm going to go ahead and just sort of change this uh, in a rotation. So I'm going to rotate it around this way. So as you can see, it's changing the direction of the shadows and it's having an effect on those. But let's just say I were to move the point, or I mean the directional light like this and then move it back. Um, the positioning doesn't really matter uh, for the shadows. You don't see your shadows changing. But let's say I were to bring the light back there and then change its direction back over this way. So you can see where um, in some cases it doesn't really matter where this light is positioned in space. It's just going to have the same effect, the overall effect of casting shadows and stuff. So anyway, let's take a look at how to create one of these and um, how to adjust these shadows real quick. Um, you know, the directional light could be a three-part tutorial, but I'm going to try and boil it down to f uh, 15 minutes uh, YouTube time, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this directional light. And uh, let's maybe come back up here into our, our home view. Um, let's see here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to just uh, come up here and we're going to create that light. So let's go to create. And let's create our light, which is going to be a directional light. But let's go ahead and check this option box, and you'll see where intensity defaults to one. That's cool. Color is going to be white. I don't have ca um, cast shadows checked in this case. Um, sometimes by default, yours might come checked. But most of the time, by default, this should be unchecked. So let's leave it unchecked for the moment. And go ahead and leave interactive placement on. Now, this is kind of important because watch what happens when we use interactive placement. If I hit create, I'm going to go ahead and boy, it, it did something funny. I'm now inside of this light. So keep that in mind. Um, if I click on this light, uh, you'll notice that um, basically we can use our camera controls to kind of move it into position. So let's just say I want it coming kind of directly overhead and I want to kind of I'm going to kind of do something like that. We're going to just sort of be frontal and have it come on at a little bit of an angle and that'll cast some shadows behind there. Okay, so I'm going to just sort of click on my, my chooser over here and deactivate the scene. And you'll notice that um, right now I can't really get out of this scene. Yeah, I can tumble around it and I can sort of do some stuff. But right now I'm kind of stuck here. So 
in order to get out of there, look at what Maya did. Um, if you go to your panel section up here and you go to your perspective, you'll see where it. we have a camera one, which is actually the camera I used to create the beginning opening animation. But now I have a camera two shape, and that's essentially what we're, we're looking at. We're inside this, this camera shape, basically. It is the directional light, but it uh, sort of is indicated by being a camera shape. So in order to get out of this view, we need to choose the perspective view again. Okay, so now I'm out of the per I'm in the perspective view, and you can see where our light is is doing what it should be, and everything looks pretty much normal. So now we can kind of spin around this uh, this scene and kind of see what's happening. So there we go. Now let's take a look at uh, the first step in adjusting one of these lights. Let's go ahead and choose that light, and I'm gonna come over here, and I think I'll go to my uh, tabs. Uh, right over here and you'll notice under your directional light shape one tab that you'll have basically a starting point and by default we didn't choose any kind of shadows but what we're interested in here is our depth map shadow attributes and you can see where we've got depth map shadows but it's unchecked which is the way it should be by default and ray trace shadows that's not checked so that's good we don't really have any shadows being thrown right now and if I were to do a quick render um, you'll notice that there are no shadows but let's go to our most basic choice um, up here at the top and it's just a starting point let's just click on use depth map shadows okay and let's go ahead and see what happened down here well now you can see where shadows are kind of showing up behind our, our object over here because we're in high quality rendering we have our shadows turned on our light turned on and um, so that's how, what we're seeing so if I do a quick render on this you'll notice there they are. I'm going to come in here a little bit more and let's take a little bit different view. Let's come down here and look at the shadows, do another render, and you'll see that I'm on Maya software, default settings, just from the start, and uh, I have depth map shadows chosen, and our resolution is at 512. It's best not to mess around with this resolution because it could cause Maya to crash, especially with a directional light. So for the time being, I'm just going to leave it on 512. And we're not going to really be concerned with these at the moment because that uh, gets into some other stuff, a uh, different type of tutorial. But we're going to look at the filter size, we're going to look at some bias, and um, we're going to adjust a little bit of these settings to get sort of a better look on our shadows. And as you can see, the viewport quality is always going to be a little blocky, but when you get into your render view, we'll be able to see those a little more clearly. So let's start by just looking at a simple Maya software with the depth map shadows set at 512. And let's come in here a little closer. I'm going to go ahead and do a render view, and you'll notice that they're kind of blocky. And they have sort of, um, yeah, they just don't look too good. So let's adjust them a little bit inside of the Maya software. I'm going to come down here and let's play around with this filter size. Uh, let's just move it up to two and see what happens. I'm going to take a quick render and you'll notice where in your shadows it starts to get a little blurrier but also probably a little nicer looking. Um, so you can play with your filter size um, there and usually three or four is good enough to get a realistic nice looking shadow. And um, in relation to the object, let's see what it looks like. Okay, so that kind of gives it a nice shadow. Now remember, if you pull this back down to, let's just go to one on our filter size, take a look at what it looks like. Ugh, that looks horrible. <laughs> okay, so our filter size is on zero. Um, let's move it up to one. Let's take a look. So you get the picture. That's your filter size. And this can, um, you'll notice it's not really adding much to our render time. I mean, it's almost immediate. So you know in some cases you may need a three or a four let's set it at four and see what happens okay the render time just got a little bit longer and you'll notice where you know the shadows look a little more fuzzed out so I'm gonna bring this back down to uh, to three and I'm gonna do a quick render and there it is so um, that's kind of the starting point there you're not really using shadows, um, fog shadow, or so you don't really need to worry about these in the beginning on the default. That's a whole different tutorial, so you might want to watch the tutorial on um, fog and shadow. Um, so anyway, that's essentially it with um, with depth map shadows up here. 
Um, yeah, they're, um, they're sort of the most basic um, uh, that you can use. So just uh, be aware of that. But they're also less computationally expensive than using mental ray, okay? So let's go down here and we have depth map shadows that we're using. Let's see what it looks like just on default in mental ray. I'm gonna click over here and I'm gonna go ahead and do another render. Well, that's the default mental ray setting. And um, you know we could fine tune this a little bit more with our render settings and um, the way we actually set the settings up here. Um, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. Um, just because they're going to have an overall effect on, on the shadows as they render as well. So it's really a two-part stage. So now we're going to just set up our um, render options. Let's set up our render options um, in uh, Mental Ray. Let's just do the quality. Let's see. Let's set up a quality of instead of draft, let's just go to production and set it at production and sort of leave that as our default. All right. And then let's also come over here to um, Maya Software and let's set our Maya software up to uh, kind of the same. Let's just come up here and go into production quality as well and leave that as the de default. Okay, so now I have some render settings that are a little bit more, um, you know, they're a little better um, just by default. Um, so let's take a look at what this looks like now in um, Mental Ray. Uh, let's see what this looks like in Mental Ray. Okay. You'll notice that the, the shadows are, are sort of looking about the same, so it doesn't really affect it too much in Mental Ray. Let's take a look in Maya Software and see what our uh, production quality in there looks like. Okay, so that looks pretty good too. So you can see where the shadows, they're all going to vary, but these are just various ways to kind of play with them. All right, well, let's move on from depth map shadows, and let's come down here and let's just click on Use Ray Trace Shadows. Now, if I go up here, you'll notice that because I chose that, my depth map shadows are no longer available there. And we can make uh, adjustments down here with our ray trace shadows. So let's, um, because we have ray trace shadows on and um, we're in a, more of a, a mental ray mode, um, you'll notice that um, you'll have some mental ray options down here as well. Um, and I may have to do that in another tutorial of, about covering more about mental ray and shadows. But for the moment, let's just look at what's happening here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a quick render. And um, we're in Maya software right now, so you can see that um, we're using some mental ray stuff so our shadows don't show up. So you want to make sure that when you're using you know, ray tracing, sort of, that you're in uh, mental ray. I'm going to go ahead and do another one. And now you can see where we got sh shadows in there and they're nice and crisp and, and sort of looking cool. Let's come down here and see if we can uh, mess around with those a little more. Um, I'm going to up the, um, the shadow rays a little bit. I'm going to bring these up to about 18 and I'm going to bring this ray depth limit up a bit. And let's just see what happens. I'm going to come over here and do a, do a render. And there you go. You can see them starting to get even more definition. So you can go ahead and use, you know, uh, shadow rays up into the 30s or, you know, 40s, whatever. Um, you can also raise this ray depth limit up quite a bit. And, um, you know, it's really sort of finding a balance of, you know, how crisp you want your shadows to be. And, um, you know, that's, that's kind of it. Um, you can play around with the light angle. And essentially, if I put this up into the middle there, watch what happens. Um, you're going to get some various results um, that you may or may not uh, may or may not like. <laughs> that one, uh, we don't get any shadows at all. I'm going to bring it down to about eight something. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. Okay, so let's back this off a little bit and see what happens when we uh, change that light angle a little bit more. Uh, it's at 8 now. Let's bring it down to say like 2 and let's see what it looks like. And there it is. Now it's given us kind of a, you know, marred look. So that's pretty cool. So anyway, that's something to mess around with at the moment. Um, those are some different options you have of, um, you know, fine tuning your shadows. And uh, so I know this isn't a full explanation. And I hope it got the point across because uh, it's a big topic. So maybe we'll pick up with another tutorial on uh, more on light and shadows. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the directional light. Um, and uh, as always, read a book, have a great day, and uh, learn something <laughs> over and out.